Let's talk about GitOps. GitOps is a way to manage your infrastructure and applications. Now there's three main things to remember with GitOps. For one, it says that your configuration for the entire system must be declarative. Kubernetes YAML is a great example of this as it's a set of facts rather than a set of instructions. Next, your configuration must be version controlled, hence Git. And lastly, that configuration must be automatically applied to the environment it configures, uh, as well as automatically reconciled so that any changes in the environment are detected and also reflected in the configuration, essentially having a source of truth uh, for the configuration of your apps and infrastructure. Let's start with a simple example. Now I'm going to start with a CI workflow, that is continuous integration. Let's say that as a developer, we're working with some code that'll be built into a container image. So this is a code repo, and this kicks off a uh, CI build. Now the thing with GitOps is it's not very opinionated when it comes to CI tools. So you can continue using your existing tools, whether it's something like Jenkins, uh, GitHub Actions, maybe code commit on AWS. So we're not really opinionated here, but we're gonna simply write this out as CI build. So what we really want is a container image in a registry. So that's really the last piece of the puzzle here. Let's say that this puts, uh, puts this in a registry maybe something like ECR, Elastic Container Registry, on AWS. So this is the scope of the CI portion of our build. Uh, now, if we wanted to implement this in a way that wasn't true to GitOps, maybe a standard DevOps workflow, let's see what that would look like. Now, the container image is gonna be combined with some config. Let's say that's in a different Git repo. So in a config Git repo, so for things like Kubernetes deployments and services and that kind of thing, that's gonna be combined with the container image from the registry, and this is gonna kick off a CD build. So not a CI build, but slightly different. So this build pipeline will probably do something like a kubectl apply to apply the YAML resources to our, let's say we have an EKS cluster here, uh, Elastic Kubernetes Service. It's a managed way to run Kubernetes on AWS. So this kubectl apply command runs, deploys the pods or deployments or whatever they might be. But unfortunately, this is not true GitOps for one critical reason. This config is not the true source of truth. Something could change in the cluster itself, but the build thinks the state of the cluster or the environment is the last time the build was run. And so to be true GitOps, we need some sort of reconciler that's, uh, that's reconciling the state of the config and the state of the cluster, that's gonna make it a, a true source of truth. Okay, so here's where Flux comes into the picture. Flux is an open source tool for reconciling the state of your config and your environment. So Flux, let's extend out our cluster here. So Flux will be installed on our cluster. Now, uh, we can register this container registry as a source of truth. So whenever a new image gets pushed out, a new version of the code, uh, a new container image gets created, Flux will be notified, and now Flux is gonna do two things. Now, the obvious one is it's gonna take that image and go ahead and deploy it into the cluster. Uh, so that could look something like Flux. Talk to the Kubernetes API server. Obviously that puts it in at CD, and then goes ahead and pushes that container image. But critically, what it's also gonna do is record that back in the configuration repo. Let me just draw that again down here. So essentially what it's doing is registering the state of that latest push that's come in through the registry to Flux and it's putting that in the config. So this has a great effect that there's this feedback loop now where engineers can look at the configuration, the commit history, and see uh, what the state of their cluster itself is. And in fact, they can be confident of that because Flux is always monitoring the state of the cluster of course, Flux running in Kubernetes, taking advantage of the controller mechanism, that control loop always going, making sure that the state of the config matches, this, uh, sorry, the state of the environment matches the state of the config. Now lastly, as a dev, as a DevOps engineer, I could also work directly with the configuration itself. Let's say I need to work with a new deployment, new service, change the number of replicas, something like that. I can push a change to the config and that'll kick off um, uh, 
you know, Flux to detect that and to make the necessary changes in the cluster. And so we can see that with GitOps, we get a number of advantages. Now there's a separation of responsibilities as devs can continue to focus on the workflows that they're used to. So deploying code into Git, uh, instead of worrying about how the actual application container images are deployed to a cluster environment, we can take advantage of Git capabilities, things like merge requests or pull requests uh, at this phase to kind of configure where these workflows go, whether it's a dev, test, staging, uh, or prod environment. And there's paradigms established here with Flux using things like Customize, which enable you to create overlays on top of Kubernetes YAML, really essentially customizing uh, the same configuration, but for different environments. I hope you enjoyed this quick video overview in GitOps, working with Kubernetes with a focus on Flux. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Thank you.